Hey, hi! Welcome back to the series of A Spice sessions. So, I am Tota Krishna Hema, your A Spice expert. So, in a nutshell, like today we would like to deal with Sway 2 software architecture design. Before going through it, like I will just summarize the SWE1 software requirement analysis. So, we got software requirements and we have documented it in a SRS software requirement specification as functional and non-functional requirements. So we have defined each and every requirement over this verification criteria uh, and uh, we have uh, classified the requirements as uh, into groups, categories and we have sorted it and we have prioritized it and uh, we got it reviewed internally and externally through the customer and uh, we got it signed with the clarifications uh, from the client and we have defined the responsibilities roles and and etc and all and uh, we have come up with the uh, come up with a traceability approach uh, so software requirements to the system requirements and software requirements to the system architecture so yesterday or in the previous session, I have forgot to say one more traceability in this software requirements to qualification test cases and its results as well. So software requirements to releases as well. Uh, so after this, like we have functional and non-functional requirements right now. Uh, so how to do after this? So after software requirement analysis, we have software architecture design. So what is software architecture design? I can say that other term is high level design. Uh, so the purpose of the software architecture design process is to establish an architecture design and to identify which software requirements are to be allocated to which elements of the software and to evaluate the software architecture design against defined criteria so here also you can see so all those requirements uh, it is documented in SRS the same way we have a document called software architecture design document so in this we have to define the verification criteria as we defined in the SRS as well uh, so here we have uh, software elements in place uh, so we have the the story entire story will revolve in and around the software elements only uh, so we will define uh, software architecture design in terms of software elements okay the first step is we have to define it and identify the elements of software okay the second step is the software requirements are allocated to the elements of the software uh, so then the, we have to define the interfaces of each software element. The next thing is define the dynamic behavior and resource consumption objectives of the software elements. Uh, so it is like we have to define the dynamic behavior. So I will explain you in the later slides. So uh, this is these two are the common things like uh, it, we have to ensure on consistency and bidirectional traceability uh, between uh, software requirements and software architecture design uh, we have to ensure on the communication of these things so software architecture design is agreed and communicated to the affected parties let us get into the base practices of uh, SWE2 uh, so it has nine base practices BP1 talks about develop software architecture design uh, so how to develop ar architecture design is like we have to define individual software elements uh, from functional and non-functional requirements which we have defined in SRS document uh, so then like we have to uh, BP2 is uh, allocating software requirements so we have to allocate uh, each and we have defined a software element right so if for that we have to allocate uh, software requirements uh, and then bp3 talks about define interfaces of software elements uh, so identify develop and document the interfaces of each software element uh, so what is uh, this is the major difference from srs2 uh, uh, architecture design document uh, so it is 
we have functional and non functional requirements uh, so you as you can understand like uh, uh, design document has a, uh, has a software element level but wherein the interfaces interfaces which we have which we are going to define in is the major uh, change in between srs and uh, the architecture design document bp4 talks about uh, Mm, describe dynamic behavior so what is dynamic behavior so how it will behave okay how it will be behave to the different operating environments or different operating modes so while you are starting it up uh, so uh, how it will react to the different uh, different uh, mode of operations uh, so it is like uh, we have to evaluate uh, by 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 documenting it so uh, in this particular scenario how the system how this uh, how this particular software element will react uh, this is how we have to we have to describe dynamic behavior uh, so evaluate and document the timing and dynamic interaction of software elements to meet the required dynamic behavior of the system uh, so dynamic behavior is determined by operating modes Uh, so as i said before like uh, it is on startup shutdown normal mode calibration diagnosis and uh, these all like uh, these all and the processes and process uh, intercommunications so one uh, one particular software element is communicating with is calling some other uh, element or uh, you know uh, tasks or threads time slices interrupts uh these all these all comes into the uh, these all operating modes can be considered for the to determine dynamic behavior so we have to document each and every dynamic behavior in a in a, in a document in a in a proper uh, uh proper way so that we can identify the best solution out of it okay and best practice 5 uh, uh five talks about define resource consumption objectives uh, so when this is uh, as i said before like uh, the software architecture design is nothing but uh, arranging software elements in a hierarchy hierarchy hierarchical manner uh, so in this hierarchy like uh, what sort of resources we require we require means like uh, for example if you are working for in a linux environment so you need an os which supports linux environment like ubuntu or uh, if you are working in windows then you have you will have this particular rom this particular ram or even for ubuntu also this is all required so what is uh, Uh, what is other uh, uh, what all the other factors which uh, which is required for your particular laptop or your desktop or uh, your load capacity and all we have to evaluate during this software architecture design phase itself so we have to identify the resource consumption so we have spoke about five different things first of all we have to develop software architecture design uh, that means we have to define software elements and we have to second thing is we have to allocate software software requirements to that particular elements then we have to define the interfaces of software elements then we have to find out the dynamic behavior based on the operating modes and bp5 talks about reset do uh, we have to define the resource consumption objectives bp6 talks about evaluate alternative software architecture we have come up with dynamic behavior on uh, different operating modes and even resource consumption objectives also uh, so why we have why we have collected those the, that all information before is like we have to come up with a best fit software architecture design uh, so do we have do, do we have multiple architecture design yes we have so we will try to get as much as many as possible architecture designs um, in the current scenario so we will generally we will have two to three architecture design alternatives so we will come up with the best fit one by evaluating it so we will give rating for each and every uh, co every concept or Uh, so we will simply say like you know decision analysis we will do and we will come up with that particular software architecture design bp7 talks about 
establish bidirectional traceability. Uh, so here the bidirectional traceability is talking about uh, uh, the software requirements to software architecture design and software requirements to software components individual components and uh, this uh, software architecture design to software integration test specification software architecture design document to uh, integration test cases oh sorry test report and this uh, that's that's how uh, we have uh, bidirectional traceability since in automotive we will use v model uh, so this software architecture design is directly as input for uh, for integration testing uh, so we have to develop the complete integration testing based on the software architecture design so that is why we have defined interfaces there interfaces before so we have defined it right so in bp2 the the same thing and bp8 is ensure consistency ensure consistency between software requirements and software architectural design so uh, every time i said uh, as every time i said like bidirectional traceability is and uh, maintaining review records is ensuring consistency uh, bp7 sorry bp9 talks about communicate agreed software architecture design so we have to communicate uh, here is also agreed software de software architecture design uh, so uh, as a part of evaluation eval bp6 we have evaluate alternative uh, software architecture right so generally we will have a brainstorming or you know walk through session we can say uh, walk through session so one uh, particular expert like who whoever defined this uh, uh, that particular architect will def will walk through uh, the different solutions of this architecture design that's when uh, we will review uh, review in the same open meeting and uh, we will uh, uh, we will get into the conclusion that this is a best fit software architecture design kind of uh, so that's when like we have to communicate uh, the minutes of meeting or uh, we have to uh, that's when we can uh, agree like as and when he fixes and come back to the com comes back and he will circulate for the review uh, that's when uh, we will get and uh, get the approval uh, from the inter internal and even uh, sometimes from the customer as well so let's talk about output work products so as an output of one two three four five base practices we have software architecture design document or hld document um, in place so hardware sorry uh, high level architecture design and uh, we have uh, communication record as uh, outcome six and uh, we have a review record as an outcome five and traceability record as an outcome for five and uh, we have interface requirement specification uh, so as an outcome of three thank you thanks for listening so if you like this concept so please subscribe to my channel if you have any doubts in this concept ask me uh, you can write to me it uh, at askhematota at gmail.com or else you can comment in the below comment section. Thank you.